Mr. Chair. Um, my amendment eliminates one of the most deeply concerning parts of the Republican health care bill, the provision allowing insurance companies to once again discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions. This provision was added to the bill at the last minute behind closed doors to appease an extreme group of members of Congress. It took an already dangerous piece of legislation and took it from bad to worse. It's just another broken promise from President Trump and Speaker Ryan, who repeatedly committed to protecting Americans with pre-existing conditions. What's worse, that's not all the provision does. It also allows older Americans to be charged astronomically higher prices for health care, even more than the $3,200 average age tax in the underlying bill. And it undermines the guarantee that all health insurance policies cover essential health benefits, like prescription drugs, mental health services, o opioid addiction treatment, and maternity care. As almost any woman would tell you, it's laughable that maternity care might not be considered an essential part of health care. Finally, the provision threatens to bring back annual and lifetime limits on health care, which are applied only to essential health benefits. Um, that means if a state decides to remove prescription drugs as an essential health benefit, insurance companies could cap the amount it covers for cancer drugs or insulin or HIV medications, or they could decide not to cover medications at all. This is patently unacceptable. Not only is it inhumane, but it also does nothing to address the real problems our constituents are facing. We may disagree on how to strengthen the individual market or help small businesses afford the cost of coverage, but we should all be able to agree that it's wrong to price people out of coverage because they have cancer or arthritis or any other serious illness. This is not theoretical. We know that before the Affordable Care Act, 43 states and the District of Columbia allowed insurance companies to charge higher premiums to people with pre-existing conditions. And if we turn back the clock now, the costs would be enormous. According to one estimate, the Republican health care bill means diabetes patients would pay $5,500 more in premiums. Rheumatoid arthritis patients, like my mother, would pay $26,000 more. Breast cancer patients would pay $28,000 more. And severe oncology patients, like those suffering from lung and brain cancer, would pay a staggering $71,000 more each year. I'm fighting back against this dangerous assault for thousands of my constituents who would be affected like Christine from Kirkland, who is born with a congenital heart defect and requires an expensive defibrillator to stay alive. She has undergone seven different surgeries in her life, and at age 25, she has already used $600,000 of her $1 million lifetime limit. She told me, quote, I used to cry myself to sleep thinking about the bankruptcy I would inevitably face just to stay alive once I hit that limit. Those fears are all went away when the Affordable Care Act became law, end quote. We heard a similar story from Jimmy Kimmel earlier this month when his son was also born with a congenital heart defect. He was right when he said, quote, no parent should ever have to decide if they can afford to save their child's life, end quote. I hope that all of my colleagues can support this amendment for families like Jimmy's and Christine's and so many others. Our nation cannot go back to a time when Americans with pre-existing conditions found it virtually impossible to find a portable quality coverage through no fault of their own. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to vote yes, and I yield the remainder of, time, of my time to